where the potential V like a, a, a Schrodinger equation in which the time is the uh, tau argument of the, of the elliptic function itself. It was a straight. But anyway, that's how life arrives. And what you see immediately is that... So, uh, what you see immediately is that, is that if, uh, if you said alpha j equal to q over 2 minus b over 4, then sj is 0, and it's a free theory. So that's a, so that was, that's a case where actually we have a complete explicit solution for this first form function, hence the answer for, for the full point, the full point expectation that also, when p goes to infinity, it's like a semi-classic column. So, hidden somewhere in there is also uh, but, but the accessory In that case, there's some boundary conditions. Sorry? Right? In that case, there's some boundary of conditions. Of course, there are boundary conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what, what would the solution be? I mean, that's, well, in, that the case where the S's, what? in the case where the S's are zero. So when the S's are zero, yes. Yeah. And then Psi then is just a simple exponential. We say free theory. Right, right. So, I'm wondering what solution. What? Combination of two exponentials. Of two exponentials yes. So which solution to pick? Initial condition for tau equals zero or the right side for some fixed time. No, the delay now is time. Yes, the, the initial con the initial condition well, yes, the initial condition is is, is when uh, yes, actually I'll come back to that uh, in the second part of the talk. So so maybe uh, you can skip that for the moment. Yeah. And, and but believe me there are reasonable Actually, you can write down. Psi zero. Psi zero. This is all the S's of zero. Q. 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 For some function, for for some arbitrary parameter lambda, this is uh, well, essentially a plane wave in U, and and this takes care of the intermediate. And lambda is essentially the related to the intermediate momentum here. And yes. Well, is is this a full correlator or come from a left hand side? Is it, is it left right? Yes. It's, it's only half of the correlator. It's so only the other half of the correlator. What kind of exactly the problem? What? Someone wanted to know if it is conformal block or not. It's exactly conformal block, not, not kind of. You have to multiply this by the. You have to multiply by the complex conjugate. Z is going to be x is complex. It's supposed to be complex, and z also. You have this, and you have. So this is not the full correlator. This is not the full block. This is only half of it. In some sense. So, moral one is very special intermediate dimension. What? It's a very special. It's a very special set of dimensions, of course. But it's a set of dimensions where, for generic B, no external field is degenerate. So it's a case where there are no differential relations for the uh -huh. case of the function. So, anyway. But what are the intermediate representations? I guess I don't quite understand. Here, ah, yes. here I have. Here I have. Well, he just like the differential equations. After you solve them, there are no choices of intermediate channels. Oh, okay. 
So, yeah, so you haven't specified the intermediate channels. Yes, the intermediate channels. You see here, uh, see, when, I, when I want to extract the, uh, the, uh, the disk keys, I have to say here what the conformal dimension is. Yes. And, well, choose it to be this. Could be minus, plus or minus 1 over 2 b here. I'm sorry, this is alpha 4. Actually, when you solve the equation, you probably can extract. Yes, yes, you extract both, so you, you get everything. So mm -hmm. Wait, maybe I don't understand what that wiggly line means. Is that oh, that's the, that's the, that's the, it's, it's that's the, the degenerate the field. I understood that part. What? What's the, I understood that part. What's the un other wiggly line going from alpha 4 minus Oh, four this is to say what the dimension oh. is. That's just a, an yeah. arrow. Yeah. Ah, arrow. Yeah. Aha. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, okay. <laughs> so this the dimension of the, of yeah, the Yeah, that helps a lot. Sorry. And now what about, okay, good. And now what's the intermediate channel on the leg level? He's like the fresh This one here? Yeah, anything. Here, call it P. The, the momentum. So as, as David is saying, it depends on what solution you take to the differential. Yes. Yes. This Very good. Is, okay. this, this, this but, number so the differential equation is valid for both a four alpha four plus and Sorry? nine. The differential equation is valid for both choices, alpha four plus minus, Yes, of course. Okay. Plus or minus, but, but it's a different. I have, I have to choose a different boundary condition depending on. Yeah, but differential equation does not depend. What this differential equation doesn't depend. So, but you know which uh, which solution to take. Oh yes, yes. I, I look at the solution. It's very explicit, and I look at its behavior when z equals to x, which tells me uh, which uh, intermediate dimension I have, and and then. Okay, so 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 this is so the simplest case is when all the SJs are equal to zero. And then of course when you say, well, uh, why, what about having integer SJs and trying to find a solution nevertheless, including this strange factor. Okay. Now, now we have a conjecture with the idea of SAF and between uh, uh, and Lofri, but actually for all alpha k, for all alpha j of this type, we have SJ is of the form NK, NJ plus twice NJ over this square, where M and N are integers. Then there is an explicit integral representation for psi. And now, this is only a conjecture. We have found only special cases for n. For n, you can do any kind, any set. But for nj's, we have only uh, some special cases. But not really should sure exist anyway. So, let's take an example. So first example, which would be S1 equals S2 equals S3 equals S2, the simplest one, S0, sorry, and S4 equals S1. Okay. So, so then that's, so the equation is then minus B squared plus E of E plus equals 4R over by B squared. So you can reduce this to lambda equation. Yes, so in the semi classical limit is the lambda equation. Okay, where where I take where here I, I essentially say well Q this is the dominant term and the kind of pin wave and then I have a, an, an, an energy eigenvalue on the right is the lambda equation. And in this in the classical limit Squared into zero, and it's over to infinity, as a coordinate. Then the solution of this is known, right? The psi of u and q theta one of u plus p over theta one of u to the minus lambda u q to the square. 
lambda is some kind of momentum. And theta, with the condition theta prime 1 of B, or theta 1 of B, and of course lambda. Okay, I gave myself an energy eigenvalue, which is lambda squared, actually, essentially. And, and then this is the, the, the solution to the classical. Now, the, the interesting thing is that when I am um, at finite d squared, this can still be solved, but we have to, keep, to do some, something here. Let me call this an emollient, psi zero. Yes, then, then, then the solution for B squared, for B, the B squared not infinite, and psi of B and T. It's, it's given by actually, by any integrating, or, see, well, we found that by, by guessing, of course. Is it clear we're not going to have a singularity in the integration from the theta one of v? Well, theta one, uh, the theta, this is this this is uh, the integration with the limits are to be two zeros of theta one. Yeah, I'm worried about the, 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 I'm worried about the e of v in the what? denominator. E of e v, of this is well, e of v is theta one, e is theta one anyway, so it's the same. It just changes the the argument here. See, I throw right. away, see, I suppose that B squared, see, I have to go between two zeros and theta 1. Oh, I see, B squared, yeah, okay. It is like theta yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so yeah. this is back. Okay. Well, this, this has no singularities uh, in the integration, of, except at the end points, but I assume that there is no, uh, the end points, if they are singular, I have no, I mean, uh, not with integer powers, so that I integrate by parts uh, each time uh, I wish. Uh, as necessary. B squared is supposed to be really uh, not an integer. In the case. Okay, so 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 this is the first non-trivial case here. And what's more, what's more so? Let's see. I, I've lost track. Uh, now, so u goes to zero. 
Does that correspond to two operators colliding? No, you, yes. You going to zero is that a z, a z, it's, it's, it's what we are going to be interested in at the end. Okay. It's the limit you going to zero, which gives us the four point, mm -hmm. the four point piece, which we are interested okay. in. Can I ask you a question about, uh, even in this case, how to now construct a solution to left right correlation? Is there? Even for this case, you can construct the full correlate. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. And is there a formula for it? Well, it's, it's you know, for the correlator at the end where we take this times the complex conjugate. With what measure? Yeah. And, and, and. You have to integrate, right? Yes. And what is the measure? Is it now? Uh, sure. It's not, yeah. Of course, it's not. You integrate over right. what? You mean integrating over the intermediate momentum here? Yes, just three point functions. But so, I don't think I'll talk to this full correlator. But what? Well, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not trivial steps to take, but uh, it's knowing how, what measure to take in order to combine this into uh, crossing symmetric four point functions. Yes, yes, you, you have to, you have to, yes, you have to, to, to get the four point function, you have, you have to decorate this. With the C alpha 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 pieces, right, which are known from D O Z Z, and and here six another one here, and integrate over the intermediate momentum. Okay, and this we have done, and it gives us crossing symmetric or well, single value for the same in terms of x with a five four point function, a four point coverage. So, so this is, uh, and uh, in this particular case, we can check explicitly the conformal this graph for these special. Where each time for all the values that we have obtained an explicit integral representation for this uh, psi, then after that, we take the C's and integrating the intermediate momentum can be done explicitly, and we end up with an explicit formula and crossing symmetry for the four points. Okay, so, so, right. so, what's more surprising, so, okay, now, once you have, once you, we found this, and that, that we could solve for this particular value, Potential, then it wasn't very difficult to, to guess what happened for SK, SS4 is equal to 4. Because there again, the classical limit is known, you, have, you need more than one, you, get, you need as many theta functions as you can for, there are x pairs, okay? and then there are as many of these as 4. And there are conditions like this for the Vs, and not very surprisingly, uh, when you are away from the classical limit, then the uh, exact answer is given by integrating over all the Vs, you have all the factors which are here. Now, what's more surprising, do we have a formula for this? Yeah, maybe I'll write a formula at the end for the general case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, the idea is you, you say, well, I start from the it's time, you, I start from the classical solution. I have covered this part, and I integrate it with some weight function, function of the Vs and of tau, and I look for an equation for that weight function in order that, is, that the equation is satisfied and uh, that's rather miraculous because there are more equations than necessary but they are compatible and then one finds uh, one finds the function I'll write it so maybe I should write it for, for this particular case yeah, let me write it so there are Several, several things. So instead of having this one, I 
this one. I'll come back to that. Now, what's more surprising is that you can also find a, a solution in the case where the MJ does uh, so first in some sense for small values of the SJs. So the MJs are equal to zero and then I take F, S, S4 equal to two of these two. So this is certainly not classical. Right? What do you do next? Try the same trick. The same answer, and you find the solution. B squared is considered large here? Same. It could, could be arbitrary. Or this could be arbitrary. It's arbitrary. I just I said B squared, B squared large is like the classical limit because that's the limit in which the SS are integers. Right. But you're you're thinking of B squared arbitrary. Yes, but B squared is totally arbitrary. <coughs> well not say the generic, not there may be special cases, for example the uh, the rational conformal theories would probably not fit in there. Okay. But B squared is generic and that is necessarily the power. Then okay, so let's let's try it here. So then this is not so this is 2 over d squared times d squared, 2 over d squared plus 1. So when d squared is large, this is small. And this has a solution, which is completely quantum in some sense. So psi zero is again this, this uh, the free the free uh, solution, and, and so I have now so the e is remember is just theta one, so it's very close to what we had before except that now. down the general case. That's really interesting. Or rather what do you think? Isn't there some kind of Fourier transform which will let the, 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 the equation with uh, S4 being 2 over the square to the equation with S4 being 2 or 1? This is a, it's still a puzzle for us. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> one, one day I tried this and then 
see with uh, I tried. How can I say? I tried some arbitrary values of, uh, of s here, and then I found that of course uh, for integer s it worked, and I found this extra solution. Is still this point where the intermediate dimension is now, the lambda? What? Or, or, or did you it's, still, it's, still P, it's still the domain, it's still the uh, accessory, uh, related to the accessory parameters. But it's, it's hidden in V, right? V is v. like the logarithmic derivative of... V? No, where, 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 where v is the integration it? variable. Okay. Where is it contained, basically? I, mean, Sorry? I don't see the dependence on the lambda in the expression. So I see all here contains lambda. Upside zero. Okay, very good. Thanks. So, <coughs> wait. Now I'm confused. You've written so this is like uh, sort of you generated from the say plane wave as a totics. You're generating the full solution. Yes. Yes. You can, you can see that way. Yes. Okay. So now still the all for all I still see uh, one and one to three. Zero is four now. Okay, so uh, so for this one we also have an explicit expression to get it more involved, but it's worth writing it down to see the interpretation. So Expected, then this tells me that there are n v variables, v variables, like the one uh, I wrote before, and here there are n v prime, I'm going to call it n v prime variables, integration variables to the, to the represent side, and what the, the way that the integration. Sorry, what's the intuition behind that? Why should there be m v variables? Well, because because we found that for s for s four equal to one there was one. You see, because when s four is a, when s is an integer, we we know that the classical solution when s is equal to s four is equal to one, then we, we know we found the solution. We know that the classical solution is theta one of u plus one on the theta one of u or that's right. exponential something. Okay? Right. And we know that for s four, and with u related, with v related to one momentum, right? Okay. And we know that for s four equals two, then there are two theta, u plus v one, and the one of u plus v two, over theta one squared. Okay. This is this is the classical, uh, say classical Lambda equation. Okay. 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 And then so, and then there are more and more v's. Or what determines v1 and v2 in that case? Again, something similar to theta1 of I don't remember the exact formula, but it's again something like this. This is what you remember, we have, we have this one. Right. Okay? Then you have n, n, n such equations for the theta. And for the for the least, we determine all of them. Once you give the momentum, then everything is going to be. So, and then, so, so, and as I said, when n is equal to 1, then we found a, an integration, an integral representation with one integration variable, and which look very much like n is equal to 1, so we just guess that there are going to be as many, there are going to be as many integration variables in these data lines. And then that's what happens. So let me write this because that's where I keep thinking of it. So there is that on one and zero to some power. I don't write as a detail. I don't take these too much time. Then there are a bunch of integrations. And the product k equals one to m. Theta one of k is the theta prime one of zero to the minus third. This is not <coughs> n squared plus two n. 
So this is somehow the generalization, the product of as many theta functions as there are uh, for, for separately n and n equal to 1. And then there is, a, there is an interaction between these v's and v's. So this is the same as phi based on j. The one of the i minus v j to the power minus v squared. There is order to the i prime with j prime, the one of u to d prime i and u prime j to prime d prime. Everywhere, minus 4 of d squared. It's, it's almost to this. So that's of the i and i prime, the one of u d i and u prime i prime. The interpretation of the result is rather interesting. And then e to the 2 d e d a plus 4 p to the d d prime d prime. Let's say what yes. And then Q squared, Q to the power of P squared, into the Q over D. And this is integra and the integration variables of all the VK, VA, and VI, VA prime, V prime, V prime. <coughs> so, please excuse me for the time it takes to write all this down. But let's look at the interpretation. At the end, we're going to set U equal to zero because to extract the four point to extract the four point function. And when you extract when you set u equal to zero and then look at how the things depends on dk, then you realize that this is a Coulomb gas on the torus. This is a Coulomb gas. Two charges. What? Two screen charges. With two screening charges, but there was I would just there are there are many screening charges. No, but two, two types. Two, two, two types. types. Yes, there are two types. You use both screening charges. Yes, there are. Yes, yes. Why right. power is an integer? There are screen, what? screening charges. Normally, we can put the integer powers. In. But you have m and n there. Yeah, yes, there are m and n. There are common. There are small. There are small, in some sense small charges. which are when the one over v squared appears. And there are larger, the, the big charges where there is n. And you see, so this is, this is the interaction of uh, two large charges. This is the interaction of two small charges. And this is the interaction of one large and one small charge. Mm -hmm. And so here you see this doesn't depend on b because one charge is like one over b e and the other is like b. E. Mm -hmm. So we get just, a, just an integer. Uh, and, and, uh, and the whole thing is to screen uh, these and to, to screen this animal and this animal, which is uh, which is a, a big charge, which is the, the total charge, uh, which is sitting at uh, at d equal to zero at the origin. Okay, so you have, and furthermore you have this animal here, which is the electrostatic energy of these of the uh, large and the small charges in a uniform magnetic fi uh, electric field of the torus. Okay, so you have your torus like this. Sorry, what was capital P again? Sorry? What was capital P? Capital P is the, uh, is the intermediate momentum. See, when I have this, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the momentum of this one, uh -huh. which is arbitrary. So which is why we can, 
which is why we can integrate, we can uh, integrate the P at the end and check the component. Is this uh, actually a, a free field for uh, the new wheel or free fields for the SN2? Because there are a slight difference between SN2 and beta gamma also in the Coulomb gas. So this would be... This is just an ordinary Coulomb gas. Ordinary Coulomb gas. Ordinary Coulomb gas. Okay. So okay. here I have zero and, and pi over two. And then, so I have my big charge here, which is this, uh, this uh, theta one. No, and, and, and then I have here. Uh, mm -hmm. No polynomials. So it's a usual concept of So no beta gamma. Yes or no? No beta gamma. No beta gamma. Okay. okay. So I have so I have a big charge on my parallel uh, my parallel run at the origin, and I have screening charges. I understand. Okay. Uh, so that, well, okay, that's it. So, so, uh, so for this special case, so we could carry out the, the, the calculation one step further, which is integration over p. Okay. Integration over p and, and decorating things, as I said, with the c alpha, c alpha, alpha here. And, and checking the conformal structure. And the, the answer for the four point conformal block and taking the complex conjugate to have something, etc., etc., and the four point conformal block came out to be indeed what is represented here the, the uh, vacuum expectation value of one primary field on the torus, anywhere, because obviously it's translation theorem, anywhere with all these green charges. So that's uh, that was the first part of the talk. Now next, I want to say something which is still unpublished in the second part, but not unrelated. Okay. So come back. So I go back. So second part of the talk is to show that. If, you, if we start from one known solution to the differential equation, which is here, we can navigate on a lattice with periods 1 over 2b, 1 over d, well, if I write it, uh, uh, for all four external lines, for all four alphas. So let me go back. Let me re start from the beginning. Okay, so I have start with again my four point inferior block, minus one over two here. Yeah. So instead it's going to be slightly different notations because now each of us with the collaboration was doing this calculation with the different notation, of course. So I and then, but before you just <laughs> Yes. So we still have the formula on the blackboard. What? Uh, uh, this ex I mean, in, you explained the interpretation in terms of Coulomb gas yes. formula, but I think you didn't comment on the last factor. This is, one? Uh, yes. Yes. So this gets integrated over P, right? Of course, yes. And, and it, it just, actually, just at the end, there's no P anymore because it's integrated over. And actually, what's left over is just this. You mean when you form the full correlator, yes. yeah? When but you see, I, okay, I was just... In, in view of Samson's remark, I mean, isn't this basically what distinguishes it from the from the say simple mind Coulomb gas that you would get if you really had a pre field representation in terms of screening charges in the usual Dobzhenko Fatia sense? Because I mean, after all, you have a case where you have arbitrary intermediate dimensions, so at no vertex you have integer screening number. Yes. So you cannot sort of uh, straightforwardly get a Coulomb gas type representation in the usual way. And I think this is precisely the, the interest of your result, namely that uh, this is a case where you have no right to expect any sun, right. anything like, like Coulomb gas. Coulomb so gas. Yes, this I, I'm just stressing yes. to some sun because... Uh, yes, yes, there was, there was well, no... There is an integral representation of the screening charge and arbitrary powers and this, this it mimics uh, that, that you think. So in principle, in spiritual, is a screening charge and arbitrary power. Yeah, this is the usual projection. 
yeah, this is uh, something that uh, I think that we played long ago. You can write these new chapters, you know, with very powers uh, in, a, in a sense of integral, integrals. And this P integral, I think, is... No, but Jörg is uh, saying another thing. That there is a, also this additional projection on a given channel, so that mm -hmm. there is P on this intermediate line. Mm -hmm. And so for this, you should select a particular sector, and this is done by the small or standard tweak, usually. What do you mean by symmetry? Usually, of course, just by putting the spinning numbers, you're selecting the intermediate dimensions. Now you have an extra parameter, yeah, which is you should also deal with the zero modes somehow appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. But if you put, if you were to see, if if I have degenerate, if I have degenerate fields outside, outside, if I have degenerate fields outside, then the intermediate momentum is fixed. I mean, we just take some of the discrete values, not arbitrary values. Yeah. So, so. Indeed, if I have a, you know, for external lines which would be a degenerate field, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go through this trouble. Yeah, 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 exactly. This is what the, I was uh, the, just pressing. The, 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 the gas representation, but the P would be arbitrary. Right? Yeah. We know that. Okay. Yeah. That, that would translate the singularities in the, in the C's. The C's are singular when I have, when I have external lines. But, but here, uh, for arbitrary B, if I have an arbitrary C, these generic values of B, and for these values of the external lines, uh, the, the external the external lines, uh, the external moment, uh, uh, operator are not each other. So uh, there is no reason indeed to expect a common natural representation. Which, uh, I, at least, uh, I don't think there was a reason that it okay. Can you comment on the singularities in the integrand? Yes, yes, singularities of vehicles V prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to take principal values. And, and also, do you take principal values? Yeah. And also, the VI equals VJ or VI yes, plus. Yes, 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 yes. Well, well here, if I have non-integer powers, I have no problem, of course. Well, but one or the other is going to be non-integrable. Where? Just because you have B squared and one over B squared. Yeah, one or the other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right, but uh, I, well, I do whatever, you know, I do partial integrations to, you know, I throw away everything which is not an integer power. When I'm doing my integration by parts, I throw away everything which is not an integer power. By saying, well, you know, it's a, you know, you do the cutoff and you throw No, 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 by no. integration by parts, you know. This is, this is, this is, when you write down the, for example, just the, the representation for the gamma function, the integral representation for the gamma function, when, when the argument is negative, but then you are beyond, so it's divergent at the origin. But nevertheless, if you want to check that gamma of z plus 1 is z gamma of z, uh, you do it by throwing away the surface term. So you throw away all, all surface terms, as, as long as uh, the power is not in It works. <laughs> well, you can justify it by having sure. So, so let's go back. Let's go back to the, the original problem. Okay. Uh, uh, so this animal. Then let me here extract, and here I have. So here this would be, and I said alpha one minus one over b, one over two b, intermediate thing here, and here I have an intermediate alpha. And alpha i minus q over p on the third pi momentum, which will be i, to be imaginary, pi in the world. So this thing, I extract some powers of z1, powers of z2, powers of 1 minus z1, and 1 minus z2, and 1 minus z1, z2 which corresponds to extracting the naive short distance behavior of when, when z2 goes to 1, z1 goes to 1, and z1, z2 goes to 1, and then times the function of z1 and z2. And this is such that g has a power series expansion with z1 and z2. 
once I have determined what alpha I take here, the fact that I'm going to take this intermediate uh, state to have this uh, anomalous dimension, etc. And then, so, so G satisfies uh, this something which is like the Rayleigh equation, of course. Rayleigh's equation is written in terms of G, Z1 and Z2. Let me write it. So, second order equation is four regular single points, of course. Our coefficients, which are functions, of the of the of all my parameters here. Then there is the one minus one over this square. This is the D theta out here. Check whether this GI 
you will satisfy the same equation with new values of the parameters and function of the, which will be functions of the other ones. And again, I, uh, so I have to do partial integrations of the U over for that to, to, to carry my operator from Z1 to U here. I again throw away all surface terms, which we know. Okay, so I suppose that this is say a G is say for example I can take the solution of G which the solution in G which is the one which is singular at Z1 equal to zero and say we go from zero to Z1 for example. Forget this for the moment, although it's very important. I probably won't have time to describe that in detail. But okay. So plug it in and, and try to verify the equation and you find that indeed there is a solution. But I, but now not for arbitrary x contrary to what happens in the case if you have a geometric case. I have to I find that if x should be equal to this. Plus or minus two four. Plus or minus because P4 enters on list through delta 4, which is quadratic, in, uh, which is P4 squared, essentially. Whereas the alphas are linear in P. So, so trivially, I would have two solutions because if I can have P4 or minus P4. Actually, very, the, the calculation is relatively involved. Uh, the, when you change to the P's, you find that the answer is rather simple. And furthermore, and there are new P's, PI1, PI2, PI3, PI4. So I have a vector. And so the new vector is actually this way. Plus. Same matrix is, gives you triality and SLA. It's a what? SLA triality. Yeah, well, but here I would interpret it as a reflection with respect to the hyperplane, orthogonal to the vector to this vector. Okay. So, so you see, so, so, so I start from a, an initial an initial solution. I apply this integral transform. I get again a new solution. Ah, and also very important that P is unchanged. Intermediate P, P unchanged. So the intermediate momentum is unchanged. And, and more or less the accessory parameter, if you wish. But not quite, because we have a dependence on the two. Like and and, and the, so the external momentum are changed this way. Okay, so, so this is. So uh, uh, reflection with respect to that hyperplane and translation by this bzr by this small vector. Okay. Now, so this is one thing. Then the other thing that one sees very easily is that if you start from g of z1 and z2, just consider the, the differential equation for itself. Then I can not get, this is a generalization of what happens for the, the, the hypergeometric equation. You can go to Z1 to some appropriate power by G, and 1 minus Z1 to an appropriate power G again, 1 minus Z1, Z2, again, to the same some, with, with uh, some appropriate power. And going from here to here, this going from to this one to this one amounts to change P1 to minus P1. Here, this changes P2 into minus P2. And this changes P3 into minus P3. Whatever the initial P's were. And remember that G depends only on, and, and in the differential equation, this depends only on P4 squared. 
So P4 can be pressure matrix. So you see that by combining by combining these reflections, so these are reflections with respect to the, the uh, coordinate hyperplanes. Right? P1, P minus P1, P2, etc., and P4 also. So in this moment, in this space of P's, okay, by uh, applying successively uh, these transformations, these reflections, and their reflection with respect to the hyperplane followed by translation, then I can reach a whole lattice. And this is the lattice So, I, for example, I can start. So, you see, this so this explains why, more or less, why we could, in the previous, in the first part of the talk, obtain integral representations for uh, arbitrary values of the central charges located anywhere. I'm not saying the central charges. Okay. The arbitrary value when I have when I have s is equal to n plus two n d squared over b. When I told you that we didn't have answers for all values for all the values of the MR possible, because actually there's still a person there, but, but we said I told you that for for any case where we have an explicit solution for the S and n equal to zero, we could add n as uh, at will. And this explains why, you see, because starting indeed, starting from the solution, I can navigate in this uh, with this transformation, I can navigate in the lattice and go to arbitrary values of so this is this is another way of seeing the fact that the MIs here can be arbitrary. Okay, so we, we still have no answer for arbitrary n. We have found answers for one of the n's non-zero, uh, which is the, the answer that I know rather explicitly on the blackboard, and all three equal to zero. We have also an answer for all n's equal, and also for two n's equal. And the other zero, but we don't have an answer for arbitrary MIs. So we believe it exists. It's a bit strange that we can navigate on this lattice but not on this one yet. And realization is the new world is B goes to 1 over B? Yes, yes, it's B going to 1 over B. So this is this factor of truth. Yes, it's strange also. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, it's strange. Now, you see, on this lattice, uh, we uh, miss a little bit, that's maybe last time I mentioned, becoming disorganized, uh, because we have to, because we do this, uh, let's see. I show that it should be M and not to M. No, it's M. <coughs> we, we have M equal to 1, and it's 2, and it's 3, etc. But here we have only M, uh, M. So, so see, let's go back to the starting point, right? Where, where we had alpha 1 equal Q minus B over 4. Let's look at this. Yes, Q, Q over 2 is equal to Q over 2 minus B over 4. We started with this one, alpha 1. And this, was, this was the simplest case. Where, where we have a free theory, no elliptic functions in no elliptic functions in the in the uh, Laplace in the Lambda uh, equation. Okay, now you see that because when I when I when I, when I extract my compound function, then the, the, the intermediate in, so this is what this is b over two. Uh, um, this will be b over four. Minus plus one over two b. Okay. 
And then in, in the, so in the intermediate state, I subtract one of the two. So there is no way by, by then adding and then S, S SR here. There is no way by, by using the SI that I can reach all four external dimensions equal. I, I miss, there is, a, there is a B over four. This will be, there is, how can I say? Yes, because because SI no, this is easy to put this over now. Cases. Yes. And so with this, uh, I mean, did you try to calculate the fusion move or the braiding transformation? What, what could be the... For uh, fusion rules, uh, what did you want to... Well, I want to bring alpha 2 and alpha 3 close okay. to each other, yes. such that I have the expansion in the channel... In the other channel. Where yes. in, ...in the other channel. Yes. So I, I was just wondering uh, oh, 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 how, how hard or easy it would be to do it with the help of your integral representations. You want to see you want to see what appears in this channel. Here. Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. Yes, everything appears. Yeah, this I know. But <laughs> <laughs> can you, you want to see explicitly? You want uh, to see explicitly? Can, can you compute it explicitly with the help of your formula? Well, that would cause well, uh, I suppose so because you, you you would take z here, you would take z two going to one. Z2 going to one is equal to one. You see some kind of analog of Clapton and Cartesian and all this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, six J's. Uh, 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 this is, since we have a rather exclusive form, so it should be. So, yeah. Because, I mean, it must be, I mean, of course we know in principle the answer, but that might be a nice uh, and more explicit way of, of obtaining it. <coughs> uh, so this must be given by an integral transform, yes. where one is integrating with some kernel uh, P, P prime, uh, over the, do, the, the the crossed set of conformal blocks, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I just would yeah, be happy yeah, to see if, if this can be obtained from this formula. Yeah. Uh, yes. The Coulomb graph picture, can it be a kind of, if we play with it to try to kind of write the generic one? No, only for those? Only for those, yes. And, and well, what do you mean generic one? Well, I mean, uh, see, this well, is, uh, this, uh, as, as Nikita mentioned, this is kind of logical equation yes. for, yes, yes. for torus and some, yes. okay, in some sense uh, that one will have a general solution for compact group case and you know, compact one you might think to, to get some by some analytic continuations, and things like that. So there can be a conjectural formula yes. for uh, integral formula, conjectural. Conjectural. And then uh, maybe somehow, even if it's not good, but you can maybe do left right movers and get a good formula, <coughs> also this is wrong formula, but you still get a good formula. <laughs> <laughs> good formula yeah. no? The wrong formula can be good. There is no canonical there is no canonical definition. I mean it's got formal work is uh no I'm asking if they try to I ask if if they try to write uh, the formula Yes. <laughs> 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 Andrea, 
And uh, can I ask you once mm -hmm. again to just repeat the statement? So you take this uh, five point in common block, yes. with a special external uh, like yeah. yes. and uh, then we write down an integral representation for it uh, in terms of the stoic uh, column gas. Yes, yes, yes. 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 And uh, the, the statement is that this is true, yeah, that one yes. is equal to another. But uh, any reason, or just uh, just, what we find, uh, just a discovery, yeah. So ju just very much like this original zoology was formula, yeah. that uh, we discovered uh, that there is this uh, Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And it doesn't shed new light to it, uh, in the sense of to, to the no, I, I can't call it a mystery. Well, but for me, for, for me at least, for me at least, uh, and it's still a curiosity. And understanding why two things should uh, should have anything to do with each other? No, no, the, I don't understand. That's actually, actually, the, the, the integral representation thing, all, the, all these theta functions I had, I had many years ago, but never published it because I didn't. No, it seemed to me, well, this is just a curiosity. Who's going to be interested in curiosity? Yeah, it's extremely interesting. Why, 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 Okay, but, uh, then what do you do with it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, also, also, uh, one thing perhaps, uh, since you're talking about Torres, etc. If you go away, if you go away from these uh, special points where uh, Lame is solvable, uh, then uh, what happens? Okay. Could it be that, you know, when here, why does why do we get, we, uh, my interpretation, uh, we arrive at the, the free Lame equation, so we arrive at the free equation when we, have, when we take these special values. And, and, uh, and then we, uh, okay, and then you have those integral potentials uh, for, for, the, for integers. And say, well, why, is, why do we get to the free equation? Apparently because this change of variable, right, where u is the elliptic integral, because this queer root somehow kills the, uh, see, in this one, in this one, in this, on this, on this side, then the exponent differences are all one half. When I have this, uh, these, uh, these uh, special values of alpha, and and because of, because I have the screw here, it just in some sense absorbs the the exponent differences, and we end up with a free equation. Now, could it be that there is, uh, if we don't have, if we have other values uh, of the exponent dimensions, where uh, instead of having one half for for the uh, exponent differences, we have some search for example. Then, then uh, I suppose you go to, to, to have a little curve. So to a hyperelliptic or automorphic? Automorphic functions? Or, I don't know. Eric, it's a special fractions you interpret the vertex operator as a twist operator, which you call the twist bounding initial operation. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. may not be Hasselhoff's operation. What could it be? This is, uh, no, I am not knowledgeable enough to uh, know this. Uh, so that would, be, uh, that would be a great thing because then we could even enlarge even more to the case of we have some very specific function. I don't know. But we do probably know more. Hyperelliptic, hyperelliptic, automorphic. Yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes.